Hello and welcome back to Reading Radio. I'm Alora. And I'm Jason. And this month we are going to be doing The Similars by Rebecca Hanover. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe the first time listening to this show, you may not know what it's all about, but just as a quick recap, and for those of you who are listeners, you know, just tune out for a second. Uh, but I'm Jason, this is my daughter, Laura, and we read young adult fiction together and then just have a little book club discussion for those of you online and hopefully uh, on our Facebook group and all those places we can discuss great young adult books. And so if you're into YA fiction, you have found the right place to be. But in the meantime, we are almost through NaNoWriMo and I want to find out how your book is going. <laughs> I'll be honest, not very well. I only made it about a fifth way through what I originally wanted. But I'm still. this is still drastically better than I've ever hit before. So you were around, what, 11,000 words last time I checked? Yes. Which is better than you've done before? Yes. How many words have you ever written for one piece before? I think about maybe 5,000 was the last book I started. Okay, so you've, and that was over the course of like three months. So you have doubled your efforts as far as your writing goes. Yes. That is a success. I'm very proud of what I've done so far. Good. Because a lot of people get bogged down in the fact that they didn't meet that 50,000 words or whatever their goal is and don't recognize the fact that they're improving in whatever they did before. And I want you to recognize that you are a better writer today than you were yesterday or the day before or a year ago because you've, you've done 10,000 words and you're still churning. And you at least have one very excited reader. <laughs> <laughs> Albeit that is my little sister, but one person excited is better than none. You at least know that you, there's an audience. because there, <laughs> there are more than one of her out there somewhere. The matter is just That's to find That's terrifying. <laughs> I hope she doesn't listen to this. <laughs> She doesn't, don't worry. Uh, then, <laughs> I forget what I was even going to say. That was funny. We'll leave it a go. All right. So you're doing that, and I am taking a lot of coaching lessons, um, both for volleyball, which I'm going to assistant coach this year, and also for just life coaching. I'm taking a confidence coaching course, to, which is why I'm telling you about how to improve and think about your goals in a different oh, way. you're using me. I am, I am helping. It is helping me to be a better father, a better coach, a better uh, just friend, hopefully, because I can... I can help people to see their improvements. And I, if you make people think of themselves more positively, you're a good friend. Then people will like to be around you. And I'm hoping that's the kind of things that I can do. So that's where we are. Okay, what are you reading besides the similars? Honestly, I haven't been reading too much. Because you've been writing so much? Yeah, I've been writing or when it's time for, like when I normally read, bedtime. I've been working a lot on art. I've been drawing quite a bit instead of... Um, reading, or I'll listen to whatever audiobook we have for the podcast right. to get it done. Since you brought it up, I'll go ahead and mention it. Uh, this podcast is now unofficially being brought to you by Audible. If you don't know what Audible is, it is the best audiobook system out there. Uh, they have pretty much everything you'd ever want. Uh, if you're like me, I know I'm not commuting anymore, but when I'm doing chores, when I'm taking a walk, I like to have things to listen to, and Audible is a great way to keep up on your reading, especially reading radio. <laughs> when you've got when you've got other things going on, but you do have the ability to put some headphones in or even just play it through any of your smart devices. But if you head over to reading-radio.com slash support, that will take you to the page where you can you get your Audible subscription and it'll throw a few bucks our way just to help keep us going. So since you mentioned Audible, I figured I'd just mention that. www.reading-radio.com slash support. Thanks for supporting the show. <laughs> okay, uh, let's talk about the similars. Uh, oh, no, I didn't talk about what I was reading. So I'm reading, uh, I'm in the middle of, <laughs> I don't know the name of the book. It's the second book in the Parasol Protectorate. Soulless is the first, and I'm reading them as part of a collection, so I don't actually see the cover of the book. Uh, it's no, an e-book. I'm not allowed You're to. You're not allowed to read, read those this. yet. But, that was all, but those are by Gail Carriger, who also wrote Etiquette and Espionage, which is number 11, I believe, in our series. I'd have to go back and look at the exact number. That's that long ago? Dang. And what I am learning is a lot of the characters from that book have grown up and are main characters again in the Parasol Protectorate. So I'm, I'm like, ooh, I know this person. Let me go look <laughs> it up and see who they were. It's been very fun and interesting. Uh, I'm reading a couple theology books. Um, and I kind of go back and forth between fiction and nonfiction, like every chapter, just to keep me balanced. Um, I think I have a few others in my Goodreads like now reading list, but mm -hmm. I'm not actively now reading them. I should probably take them off. But that my, my coaching material is keeping me pretty busy. But... Onto our book, The Similars. Now, this book is interesting because it was a, a foundling book, yeah. right? We were in the library. We're like, we need we need a, a modern book. We have a lot of classics lined up. We knew we, we knew what we're doing for our 42nd episode. Uh, we're going to do Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And if you don't know why that's important that we're doing it for the 42nd episode. Read it and find out. Read the book and you will understand why 42 is so important to Hitchhiker's Guide. 
but we'll come back around to that. But we saw this book and had a couple copies, so we could gr- we could grab a couple. We mm-hmm. actually read the hard copy for this one. I don't. I had, you don't normally read the hard copies either. I don't. I had to. I don't know if I. I looked and I don't believe it had it on OverDrive or Libby, which are our mm-hmm. libraries version of audiobooks. And I don't remember if I looked at Audible because I didn't have an active subscription at the time, but I do now. So I'd have to go back and check that. But I'm almost positive they would have it just because almost every published book is on Audible. Yeah. I, I've rarely found a book that isn't out there. But this is by... Rebecca Hanover. Rebecca Hanover. Uh, it, it was a, a YA mystery book. I think we read some of the, the leaflet, and, or the, what are they called, the back leaf, the cover leaf. And we're I like, have no idea. Dust this, guard. Yeah, this sounds good. And we're like, oh, we could do this. And we, we grabbed it and we really enjoyed it. It was, it was a, yeah. a pleasant surprise because we really knew nothing about it going in, if we're honest. We just said, we need a new, we need a newer book. This looks like a newer book and it looks interesting. It is newer, 2019. Oh. I found that when I was researching it for questions. So there you go. And what, um, what did you think what was your first impression? I was really excited about it because some of the main premise is clones. And I went through a huge, like, um, psychology kick earlier a few years ago and science and stuff like that so i was excited to read it and see how that played out in the book what yeah is- so here's just a little brief intro from the cover this fall six new students are joining the junior class at the elite darkwood academy but they aren't regular overachieving teens they're clones and they're attending school alongside their originals the similars are all anyone can talk about who are these clones why are they at darkwood and who is the madman who broke the law to create them so yeah, that was the intro that we saw. I'm like, hey, that sounds like a pretty interesting little grab your attention yeah. book. It's something we would enjoy because, like you said, we like the science behind it, some of the psychology behind it. It's also sh- it wasn't too long. I was able to read it in like a day or two, so I read it way earlier in the month. So I kind of had to reread it to remember everything that happened. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it was short, but it was a it was a quick read because. Yeah. It took two or three chapters, and it was like those two or three chapters are going up the hill of the roller coaster, and then once I hit the top of the hill and started down, I was powering through this you book. You were. You were reading like more than I'm, you normally do, because you were sitting on the couch like every minute. You're, I wanted to find out what was going on, so it grabbed my attention. It was really good for that. Overall, score of one to five, what would you say? I'd say it was about a four. I really enjoyed this one. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say four. I'm almost... <laughs> I'll tell you, if I, I didn't know it had a sequel when we started reading. Yeah. If it didn't have a sequel and it closed off as a good, like that one good novel I'm looking for, I would have given it a four and a half. But I'm going to give it a four because I don't, I didn't like, I won't, we won't spoil anything, but I didn't like the end. Like I didn't either because it almost. Remember, all, spoiler free. Yeah. You like, okay, this is going to wrap up nice. And then it just throws in a couple things like, oh, there's no way they're finishing it in the last hundred pages or whatever much was left. Exactly. And that's when you could tell it was going to be a sequel. Yeah. And that's not to say the end is necessarily bad. It's It did not align with my expectations. Mm-hmm. There was no way to please me once my expectations weren't what they should have been. That, yeah. was, that was hard. So force for each of us. That's actually pretty high. I don't think we've had a double four book in, in a while. I don't think so. Maybe Dracula. I have to go back. <laughs> we should check these scores ahead of time. But age range. I'm trying to remember. I don't... There was no language, I don't think. Maybe there was, like, a tiny bit, but nothing. There might have been a B word. I can't recall. I think there was, because Zoe pointed it out, because the girls were calling each other that, like, Mm. insultingly. And then there was no, like... There was a few passionate kissing scenes, so maybe 13 or 14? Yeah, it depends on what you what you yeah. what you look at those things. There's never anything explicit uh, as far as readability. I would, it, yeah, no big words. Probably ten mm-hmm. on readability. Ten year old, ten year old. I don't think there was anything challenging about the words that they the author used. There were a few like darker concepts too. One of the main premises was. No really? wait. Well, I, is this a spoiler? I don't think so. Okay, go ahead. Was a suicide that started before the book, so mm. there is some darker aspects that's that fair that's probably a, a good trigger warning yeah if you haven't read it already it does it is based around the, uh, one of the main characters best friend committing suicide that's fair. that does happen before the book and never i don't really think, says anything yeah nothing too bad but that is like trigger warning there fair enough all right is that enough for the pre-show we're gonna get into the main i think so all right we're gonna head into the spoiler zone as always if you have not read this book and you don't like spoilers turn the podcast off now because we will hold nothing back as far as how we will discuss this book, go forward. All right. All right. What do you? Any particular things you want to go at first? I don't know. Okay. Well, I will start with I'm a little bit tired of the school trope. Harry Potter, Percy Jackson. What was the other one we read with the Greek gods? 
I'm just blanking. For the record, I remembered right before I got to the page to look it up. It was the Asgardian Exchange. It is a it is a trope I'm seeing in a lot of YA work, and part of it, it makes sense because it it gets the kids more isolated. There's less adult supervision; their parents aren't around. It's always a boarding school, and so you don't have the where are the parents that should be helping yeah. these kids out. Question: It doesn't have to be answered, so it's convenient. But I'm getting tired of it, like because all of these problems would be solved by the parents not being morons and stepping in and be and being parents. Just just yeah. my thought. I get that. Does that make sense? I mean, from a parent's perspective, what does it what does that feel like from a kid's perspective? I feel like a lot. I've like never noticed it particularly, but if definitely a lot of like books that are set in modern day, more contemporary books, even if they have the sci fi fantasy twist or whatever, mm-hmm. are set in schools just to get them away from parents and stuff. So I agree with the school trope kind of being overused, but I never minded it too much. I didn't mind it too much until I've started to realize that I don't know twenty five percent of the books that we've done for the show. Have set been set in a school. Yeah, and so here's the here's the other trope that bothered me in this one, and I don't know if this one's nearly as common, but I feel like it is. Uh, the jerk is not the bad guy, and you're not fooling anybody. <laughs> now that we all know, okay, I'm going to spoil Harry Potter here, but you're listening to a YA podcast. You've done you did this in the last I know, episode. I'm, I'm just waiting to get an email from somebody. <laughs> you spoil Harry Potter for me, and I did. No, we don't listen to a YA podcast if, you, if you're not going to have read <laughs> the most successful YA book of all time. That's your fault. It's on you. At least I've given you a warning. Now that we know that Snape was a jerk but not the bad guy, mm-hmm. every time you set somebody up as a jerk up front, I, I'm like, they're not the bad guy. Make them the bad guy. Go the other direction with the trope. But what was her name? Um, uh, Audrey? No. There's a uh, lot of names. Tessa. Tessa. There was a lot of names in this book too. I literally have a cheat sheet here where I wrote yes. down because the name, the main, the original characters and their similars, which are their clones, all have very similar names, which so, is annoying. Well, I get it because it helps you link. Like we know Oliver and Levi go together because mm-hmm. those names are close, and we know that uh, Archer and Ansel go together because those names are close. And then being in the universe, it'd just be annoying to be named after the person you're copied after. I could see that. I'm sure Levi felt that a lot because I mean, all yeah. of the, Levi and all liver have that same assonance, consonance. I'm trying to remember my <laughs> assonance is the vowel sound, consonant consonance is the consonant sound. So whatever things I learned in Mr. Rhodes' creative writing class back in 1996. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Rhodes. I'm sorry I was such a jerk. What were we, we were talking about the names with yes, the, the names that. and the characters. But yeah, the, let's the whole like, as soon as they set this girl up to be the snotty girl and tried to like point her to, oh she's a bad guy and, like, and the main character suspects her I'm like she's not the bad guy immediately I know she's not the bad guy now somebody will eventually catch me on this but so far everyone follows this, that, that same trope and it was irritating and I've done nothing about complain about a book that we've done we said was four was a scale a grade four or point four pointer on this one so I don't want to give the wrong impression I think like we're trying to find things to complain about before we talk about how good it that is that might be it those are the only two things if yeah. I didn't have to write down the names of the characters and I think that that's a bit of a stumbling block to get into it mm-hmm. that up, upward roller coaster hill I was talking about part of it was who is this why do I care about this person who's the, okay this is the clone or the original oh, I don't uh, uh. I just stumbled a little. But once once I got to the top of the hill, my hands went up. I screamed. It was fun. <laughs> I have to say, I wasn't a huge fan of the romance aspects in it. I thought that was kind of annoying. You never are. That's true. I mean, but I th- this just feel, felt unrealistic and very rushed. Like, you were best friends with this guy, and now you find a guy that looks exactly like him and fall for him, like, the same way. It kind of described her falling for Oliver. Well, but she didn't fall for Oliver. Remember, this what broke their friendship. Uh she 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 didn't respond to his yeah. pr- profession of love and no, she doesn't know but i think she feels like that's why he might have killed himself like if if mom's twin moved in across the street after she died i would be like i don't know what to do here this is weird i'm leaving <laughs> i think is what would happen i'm moving away we int- introduce the characters introduce the story the, the plot and everything and then we get to the mystery we get to the mystery because we know something weird is going on with the similars mm-hmm. You go up, and then they're all in this big, like, orientation for class. Kind of typical opening school book thing. Mm -hmm. Like the sorting from Harry Potter. (laughs) That's very much what it reminds me of. And then you call up the kids to just draw bigger attention to them. That would also be worse, I feel like. 
Right, because they're already weird. They're already half illegal. Half the school doesn't want them there or hates them. Mm-hmm. Let's show them off for everybody. But I'm still not sure. I'm trying to remember now because it has been a minute since we read this. For some, We need to record right after we read to make these things easier. The headmaster wanted them there because it was a progressive school and they, they always want to open the doors to everybody. Yes. Was he involved at the end? Did we figure out? Maybe a little bit, but not in a big part. Okay. I think he might have got money. No, he was involved because he was being paid off because they were like running the experiments oh, on them right. in that that's extra right. room. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. All right. So they introduced them all and embarrassed them, you're saying. And then that's when you first see Levi because you had seen the other ones around because they're like clones of the big popular kids, mm-hmm. which makes, which is interesting. Um, and then you have, that's the first time Emma, who's the protagonist, sees Levi. Mm-hmm. She has the big blow up by the lake, mm-hmm. where she like tells him off, which was like the "I hate you" and then I'm gonna fall in love with you trope, like that happens everywhere. Oh, so annoying. <laughs> but it, to some degree, it's true. Love and hate are Our not opposites. opposites. They're closer to each other than it's love and dispassion or or in, just ignoring somebody yeah. or that's the opposite. Love and hate are very very close emotions. You just need to step over a very fine line <laughs> in the other place, which is why it's a trope because it's true and bears itself out in in people's realities. Mm-hmm. So, what were the uh, what did you have written down over there? I think this is all stuff for later. Oh, okay. Where do you want to go? I don't know. I think people should have realized like something would go wrong with Emma's reaction to Levi. Like, why would you put them in the same classes? There had to be some way to keep them apart. Like, yeah, it was all in part the of the experiment. Things. That's true, but... We don't know what their assignments all were yet. We know what two of them were? Mm-hmm. Oh, and the whole assignment thing. That was interesting. I didn't really see that coming. Right. I'm curious as to what kind of control he has, uh, their maker has over them. Like, hey, I'm your father. Go do my bidding doesn't really fly forever. I think it may be some form of Stockholm Syndrome. Possibly. Can you define Stockholm Syndrome for the kids Um, listening that may not know what that is? It's essentially when someone falls in love with their captor. Okay. So the person that's keeping them constrained. Or takes the side of. Yeah. Doesn't have to be romantic love. That could very well happen since that was like the only adult figure they were around. So I thought it was interesting that all the originals kind of formed an organization to be against their clones, or most of the originals. Right. Well, how would you feel if you were cloned without your permission? Some of the essence of who you are is taken from you. That would be an interesting thing to think about. And this, what the author doesn't get in, well, she gives by implication, not in explicit context Mm -hmm. so much, is... Cloning has been much more successful in this world, so we're, it's set somewhere in the future. Obviously, it gets to where we can clone human beings, we've, and somewhere along the line, maybe we've gotten to that point, which, but nobody's going public with it. So people have had time to consider this, and there's always people who stand against those kind of breakthroughs. And I think Tessa even talked about it being because her dad was the senator, if I remember. Mm-hmm. It's against the it's against nature and that sort of thing. Well, maybe it is, but everything we do is against nature. Building houses is somewhat against nature. Like, our energy grid is against... Like, everything we do to create civilization is against nature, and it just takes some people longer to adopt. There's a whole adoption curve where it's like the bleeding edge, the cutting edge, the normies, the lagging, and then the the Luddites that are back there on the end. They're still going, (laughs) I'm not watching that television! Kind of thing. And there always seems to be some... There's People just always find reasons to object and, and protest. And I think they have too much time on their hands. I don't, I don't <laughs> know what's going on. But what, what struck you as interesting? Just how many people they were able to get for them. And I wonder if that's just because of their social standing within the school. I think that's a good rather point. Rather than belie- like people actually being against it. Just, oh, all the cool kids are doing it. A lot of people will conform to be part of a group. And so there's that network effect of people are where people are. They want to be inside. There's probably a good bit of that. I think having the similars be a copy of, like, the popular kids in high school as an interesting dynamic. Because it kind of falls into, like, the tropes of typical high school dramas. Because you have the popular kids and then everyone conforms with them. Yeah. But they didn't conform to the similars because the similars weren't really the popular kids. No, they were all the weird kids who formed their own friend group. Right. They were, they were the homeschool kids over there by themselves. 
Well, they were. They were homeschooled until they had high school, and now they're now the weird kids who don't know how to assimilate. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's okay to not assimilate in the public school. I've seen what they turn out. <laughs> it, I hope people understand my dry sense of humor. I will insult both sides of the fence because they both have issues. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I, I'm okay that you're the weird homeschool kid. What did you think of the whole um, superpower aspect? I thought that part was kind of cool because originally it's based up that they're just direct copies of the original and then Emma sees them doing like these weird superhuman things and she kind of drags out a Levi. It doesn't quite make sense how that happened since they were supposed to be like perfect copies. I'm sure there's some sort of genetic modification that's possible in their science world. That's, that's true. Probably what was done. I'm sure the pure education could account for the intellectual parts, but when you're talking about being able to hold your breath for 10 minutes or do all the gymnastics stuff, there has to be some modification being done. Yeah. Which, what was, I forget what show we were watching about, like CRISPR and genetic manipulation. And what we said was, we're okay with restoring people to normal. Well, not what we, but the uh, the documentary said. Yeah. We're okay with restoring people to normal. Like somebody who can't see a certain, can't see well, we're okay with genetic changes to get them to see normal. We're not okay with giving somebody super sight. Like, we don't want genetic manipulation to give people advantage. We only want it to even everybody out, which is kind of just human nature. We want everyone to be on the same playing field. Yeah. Which you said, there was one short story you read to us forever ago where, like, everyone was brought down to the same playing field instead of being brought up. Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut Jr. I can't believe I still remember that. That was, like, forever ago. It's an amazing story. Uh, And it literally is, like, a page and a half. You should just go download it and read it. It's free. It's out there, but it's it almost feels like a lot of ways like where we are. We want to we, we want to make everybody even, but we can't bring everybody up, so we're gonna bring everybody down. I don't know. I mean, it would be it would be great if everybody could be the same level of awesome. But, but then that would mean no one was special. It would, it would, and there would be no. We're gonna verge too far into political territory. Let's talk about something uh, fiction <laughs> based for this book. What else do you have on your little notepad over there? The whole thing with Peru was interesting. Okay. When her and Levi were down painting the shed. Right. She's disappeared? No, she was or, attacked. No, sorry. Yeah. Well, the attacker disappeared. Yeah. And then... Did, who was that that attacked her? I can't even remember now. It was the girl whose dad went to jail. Oh. That was Tessa. No. It wasn't Tessa, was it? Yes, it was. Oh, then Madison's the mean girl that I've been thinking of. Tessa was her friend that the dad went to. If the dad yeah, was okay. Madison was the the head, the, the queen bee, if you will. Yeah. See again, too many characters without without enough development on all of them. So that's that's what I got. All I know is Ansel is pretty, right? He's the Hollywood pretty boy. He was in a movie or something. And then I don't remember anything about Archer. Um, Prue and Pippa were kind of interchangeable. Yeah. Pippa literally kind of re- replaced Prue after she was attacked and was sent to the hospital. Yeah, and then Jake and Yago, like... They were there. They were there. That's what you can say. So maybe they'll... I mean, there's a sequel. So maybe mm-hmm. they'll play more of a role in the next book, which is fine. They're setting up those characters to bring them bring them around. That's fine. She, the author's prerogative. It was just a little confusing. I included Cheat Sheet in the next edition. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a little bit easier on us. And then Maud was the one that helped Emma get into like the secret lair. Right, she was the ha- she was the hacker that could yeah. get into everything. So you said you want to talk about Prudence when she was attacked. Why was that? In- why was that so interesting? I don't know. I can't remember much about that part. Just the way everyone was keeping them away from keeping Emma and Levi away from Prue. Oh well, yeah, because that's because there's there's something going on yeah. there. And that's when things kind of start to get interesting. Because, like, oh, there's something really going on here now. Well, because she ended up going to the island and being captured, remember? Yeah. So her dad, like, her dad was basically like, if you, if you start looking into things, then he's going to kill her or hurt her or whatever. I don't know. Are there people who hold these kind of revenge things their entire lives and, and build their whole life around destroying people? I don't know. It seems like a very fictional trope. Right. But Maybe it, there was one person one time who did something crazy. But it's it's there a lot, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> and I'm thinking the only person I can think of close to it in real life is Michael Jordan, but he didn't destroy the world. He literally was like, "I'm going to prove to you that I'm the greatest basketball player ever." When he got cut from his high school team, and he did. He became the greatest of all time. He and he 
wasn't nice about it. Like his teammates hated him on one level, but loved him because he made them mm-hmm. all better and pushed them. Um, but he was the be- he was the best. But I've never like maybe that's why dictators become dictators because somebody said something mean to them once. I don't know. I think I could to a point. Just like someone tells me I can't do something that's feasible, I probably would try to do it to spite them. Sure, but but if not some, take someone, over the world and fake a death of a kid. Yeah, and someone insulted you a long time ago. Are you going to grow up and ruin them, ruin them <laughs> financially, or just, or kidnap their children? No, right. That, I'm not going to do something like that. That's like crazy, crazy. Oh yeah, you're just you're just crazy, but not crazy. crazy. <laughs> I see. We already talked about the end being a little. Oh. Gosh, we were yeah. like, we're, 100 pages or so, we're like, they're not wrapping this up. There's, and I think that's when you told me there was a sequel, and I'm like, ah! The ending felt rushed. Uh, rushed. I don't know if rushed is the term. I think it was definitely setting up for the sequel. That's true. And I, I prefer something with, where, I, on one hand, I feel like I could stop reading, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm fine, but I can quit. Like, mm-hmm. your, I know your mom's a little more like she has to read everything. I don't know if you're kind of falling on that. Like it you, depends. The completionist where you have to know. I'm like, you could just tell me how it turns out and I'd be okay. <laughs> uh, but I did really enjoy the journey be, um, because it went at a good pace. I'm going to say a lot of, like, all the good things about it since we talked negatively. It went at a good pace. The characters that were heavily involved, Levi, I think there was a good balance with his psychology as far as being, like, everyone thinking he's Oliver and tr- living in his shadow. That was good. Yeah. Uh, Emma dealing with... Dealing with that loss and, tr- and, tr- and being troubled by her attraction to Oliver, that was fair. A little rushed maybe, but good. Um, the slow introduction of all the aspects we've talked about, like the superpowers and how they slowly rolled out information about their dad. Okay, th- now we're getting somewhere. So maybe n- I'm talking myself into liking it as a, as a <laughs> prequel or a first book more because it feels like the setup was really done well. And then that ultimate move at the end was kind of like aha now you need to read if it was published all at once I, th- I would have been like yes perfect I think Let's I would have liked it better if I would have known ahead of time like if I was going into it knowing this is two books uh, yeah that would have helped but that's a mismat- mismatched expectation problem. that's true which <laughs> maybe like book one of X on the cover would have been great <laughs> I love it when books do those because I always pick up the second one and says second book of this trilogy this <laughs> Right, series. but I'm guessing this is the first edition of the first book. Yeah, the new cover looks and completely different. I, I don't know how, what her book deal looked like, but if you don't get, if that second book doesn't get approved, mm-hmm. there's never going to be a second <laughs> book. So maybe that you know in the sec, the next book it'll say first book, whatever. Anyway, these are all things that are above our pay grade. We enjoyed the book and I had a good time reading it. My wife even read it, but she was not feeling well today, so she couldn't record. And so we started to read it, but she couldn't get up the hill. I think... I'm going back into the book now. Go for it. But the part with the whole memory VR thing was really weird. That felt thrown in there. That was very much the pensive, wasn't it? Huh? The pensive. The thing in Harry Potter where you could go into people's memories, but it was just a technical version of it. But it was like torture, too. Eh, I don't... It was, but only because they were captured. Like, it was really just like, let me show you my memories and how things went down. And, like, I'm supposed to feel sympathy for you. And really, I got to the end, like, that was it. That's that's why you're an evil genius. Yeah, that's why you. That's why you're committing atrocities against mankind. Mm. Try again. Yeah, come up with something better. <laughs> at least, at least, you know some people's memories expand and change with time. Make the memories worse. Like maybe the person didn't really do this to you, but you imagine their slights to be bigger. I don't know. It felt like pretty normal stuff. Normal high school stuff. I mean, but that's the reason Snape was so mean to Harry. Another one where I'm like, eh, really? <laughs> I mean, it's a kid. You're a teacher. Grow up. That's fair. I don't care how mean parents are to me. I'm not going to abuse their children. And then the part where Oliver walked into the room. Because Oliver was alive the whole time. He was on the island. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So I thought Levi in my head. No, that's, that's, why I, that's why I made sure I said the right name. Yeah. Yes, that was a good surprise. Because I wasn't really set up at all. No, no. There wasn't a lot to indicate that that was going to happen other than the note that he sent to her Yeah. post-death. Like, Did you see that coming? No. Because normally you tend to see like the big twists coming and get no, frustrated with it. Not that one I didn't. And I Is that a good thing? It was because I like to be surprised. And it's hard for... 
the a YA author has to strike that balance of I hate to say this, but make the puzzle easy enough that a that a kid can be challenged, whereas an adult reading it has a lot more experiences to draw from mm-hmm. and may not feel the challenge. It may feel unfair because there wasn't really a lot of indication that it was happening. Yeah. So we'll have to see how it goes in the second book. I'm definitely excited to read it. Yeah, but it was it was nice. Like, oh, okay, he's back now. We've got a, uh, now the plot thickens. We've got a bigger mystery. What's what's his big game? That's the question now. Because he was like Oliver was like completely cool being there. Oh yeah, I meant the I totally the, blank on the big talk. bad guy. Yeah, so I want to know what his big plan is and whether or not he's going to be able to pull it off. Because that feels like that'll be the second book. The mm-hmm. mystery's kind of that first mystery's kind of solved. Now we've got to stop him from doing the thing he wants to do and figure out what that what that big plan is, so we can't stop him. And so Emma and Oliver made it off the island. Right. So how is he going to prove to his parents that it's him, not Levi? <laughs> that will be a great question for chapter one of the next like, book. Because they're going to go try to unreveal that. things. And how are you going to prove that you are who you say you are when there's literally an exact copy of you? Unless they trust Emma. And she says, listen, I saw them both. What if it is Levi? <laughs> what if there's another clone? Third one? Yeah. That would, that would be good because that's his kid genetically. So he could. So what if Levi is actually still a bad guy? Because that. I'm still not completely that, convinced no. on him kind of stuff. What if his task is actually to come back impersonating Oliver and Emma is the witness that, that justifies the Because you see belief. both and then there's two. That would be really Now cool. I really want to read the second <laughs> book. <laughs> All right, Rebecca Hanover, you have hooked me. Now I want to go read your second book. So what do you think is going to happen in the second book? I have no idea. I think it'll be I think it'll be a fairly typical, like, here's what the big mm-hmm. plan is and the similars will probably all decide to be to do the right thing although some of them a few of them may not uh, and then they'll prove themselves to humanity by doing the right thing and win over some of their some of their uh, naysayers but they won't win over like Madison will still be a brat that, that's my guess I think I don't think Levi turned completely I think it's gonna be kind of the thing where he acts to be good just enough to stay unsuspicious and then he's with him and is working with him behind the scenes mom said she has a copy at the library too but it's not open on sundays well we'll go tomorrow (laughs) and we'll start reading hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy because we need to get that done and recorded for the next episode is that i'm excited to read the second one now i hope that like the two um clone thing would be really interesting but i don't think that's it it also might feel cheap like, if there's just an infinite number of clones out there you can do, then yeah. that's kind of a cheap exercise. So, Well, w- the third one would have to be slightly younger than the other two. Unless they've got a way to speed up the aging process. I don't know what, her si- what the science is in that world. And she's kind of left that a little bit undone, so you can she can kind of play with it as she needs to. Which is smart. I'm curious. That's why she's a good author, and I'm not. Yeah. So, Okay. Is I, that it? I think so. Awesome. So next month... Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. If you've never read it, I highly recommend it. There is a BBC uh, dramatized dramatized version, yes, that I have found over the years. I can't talk. That's amazing. Uh, I don't know if that that one is on Audible, but Audible does have some great reads of Hitchhiker's Guide to pick up. If you like the hardback version, you can find them anywhere. All by Douglas Adams, of course. (laughs) I don't know how you've you've been around literature for any length of time not knowing that. Uh, Don't watch the movie. It's a little bit of a hot garbage mess, but I watched the movie before I read the book, and I'm like, you really want to do that? Yeah, I know. It's Because we started the book, and we were just like, no. I was also like... You are much younger. 10 at the time. Yeah. You'll you'll enjoy it. It's a little bit in that vein of nonsense literature, um, which is like Alice in Wonderland, where mm-hmm. it's a li- like almost like little stories within the story that are somewhat connected. That's how I feel Hitchhiker's Guide. Like, there is some big story happening, but really it's these bits and pieces of things that are kind of like their own, the skits within their own skits. Um, but it's all it's all great stuff and things you need to really know to be a proper geek because you need to know what 42 is. You need to know why uh, Vulgon poetry is the worst thing in the universe and <laughs> why you should always carry a towel and um, why mice are the sm- or dolphins are the smartest animals on the planet. Although mice aren't far behind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so these are all things you have to look forward to with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So check us out at reading-radio.com. You can find all of our social media, links to our Facebook group to discuss anything we're reading. Uh, Tell your friends about us, and thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. Happy reading. Happy reading, everyone. 
Reading Radio is a podcast released under a Creative Commons 3.0 share alike license. The music that you're now hearing is by Kevin McLeod of Income Tech, also released under a Creative Commons share alike attribution license, which means you can use this show for any non commercial purpose as long as you give us credit. All notes and anything else you'd want to find out about Reading Radio can be found at reading-radio.com. If you head over there, you can subscribe to this podcast as well as join our Facebook group where you can contribute to telling us what books we should read. Because Reading Radio is all about bringing families and friends together through a mutual love of young adult literature. And we'd love for you to join us. Happy reading.